Good evening. Um, um, my name is Frank Obin Essien. I am a missionary in Ghana and I'm happy to get the opportunity to share with you this, new, this evening um, how the work is going on and how what of you has uh, helped us and what we can do together going forward. Um, uh, in this presentation, this is what I'm going to discuss. This is going to be the outline for our discussion this evening. So I want to begin by saying thank you to what of you for the partnership you have had with, with us over the years, for the prayers you continue to say on our behalf, the cards that you send to us and myself and my family. It's, it's been very helpful and it takes us through difficult times and I want to say thank you. Um, I would also talk about my family so that you get to know them. Um, I will talk about um, our ministry location and, and the context where we are and what specifically we are doing. We'll talk about um, how what of you has uh, helped us over the years and then discuss what we hope we can do together going forward in terms of um, the work here in Ghana. Then I've been asked to offer a short devotional about how the, the importance of the gospel is pushing me to good works. And so I will end the presentation with, with the short devotional. And so with that out of the way, let's begin. So I'm happy to introduce to you my family, and my beautiful wife, Menacent, my, my first son, Perez, who is seven, and second son, Brady John, who is four, and the last boy, who is Nanaya, um, and he is three. And so this is my my first um, disciples. And so I and they are very critical to the work that I do here. And I'm very blessed to have them um, in in this work. Um, so now here is our ministry location. And uh, the country is Ghana. We are in Ghana. Um, Ghana is in sub-Saharan Africa. We are in the western part of Africa. And the city where we live and work is, is Cape Coast. And it is in the central region. Um, the central region on the map is somewhere here. Um, as you can see, it's not at the center of Ghana, but it's called the central region because it, is, it was central to the slave trade. And that is how it, it began, or it got its, its name, central region. And so that is where we are located, and that is where our ministry um, um, is, it is. Now, specifically, in terms of um, um, what we do, uh, our context, our ministry involves two things. First is um, the um, Swedro International Bible Institute. Um, this is a, a preaching school affiliated with Sunset International Bible Institute in Lubbock, Texas. And so, I am part of the instructors that is training the new crop of the new generation of uh, preachers for the Churches of Christ in Ghana. I've been doing this for about four to five years now. Indeed, that is where I was trained, and so I'm helping others to benefit from what I, I benefited from. And beyond the preaching school, I also serve as the minister for the Church of Christ campus ministry at the University of Cape Coast. Um, this is a congregation of between 390 and about 400, 450 uh, people. The, the church is mainly college students. And so the church is located on the university campus and we serve the needs of, of students who are members of the church and also use that uh, location for our evangelistic um, and purposes. And so, these two are the main um, ministry um, tasks that we are engaged in. Um, and so this has been the way what of you has supported us over the years. They have provided financial support that um, keeps my family and I together. They also provide uh, support for our working, our working fund and so that is the way what of you has uh, helped us uh, up until now. 
um, and specifically, um, what have you helped us with some funds to purchase some land with a view to making our ministry self-supporting um, going forward into the future? And so we're able to purchase about 15 acres of land and as of now, we've been able to cultivate about five acres of cocoa um, and another five acres of coconuts. So um, in about, say, roughly about three to five years, we'll be able to harvest some things from the farm and that will be a basis for, for our, 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 our being able to support ourselves. And so that, that, that is very critical and, and we, we appreciate what of you for the, for the vision that they, they are supporting. Beyond the Cocoa Farm, we also organized a leadership retreat for leaders of the various campus churches in Ghana. And for about um, four years, what of you has provided some support for us in terms of the retreat. The retreat happens twice every year, uh, one in January and the other in August. And um, what of you has been supporting that, um, uh, that uh, endeavor? And this is also critical because um, this retreat, which started in uh, around 2012, has trained several young men and women with some leadership skills so that after their graduation, they can go back to their local congregations and offer the much needed leadership that most congregations in Ghana require. And so we are using the campus church and the campus setting to train the next generation of leaders for, for the Churches of Christ in Ghana. And uh, what of you has been gracious enough to support us in this uh, endeavor and in this uh, vision. And so that is one of the ways that what of you has partnered with us in the past. And we hope going forward they will be um, our key partners as well. Um, another thing that recently that what have you helped us with, with, with some funds to repair our broken down um, uh, bars. Um, our church members live in various parts of campuses. Most, almost all of them do not have any form of transport, like their personal cars and other things. And so the church owns a bus that collects them from their various places of residents and, and transports them to uh, our auditorium, which is quite far from where they live. Um, for about some months now, the bus broke down and we needed to find some funds to fix it. And what have you was kind enough to help us with, with some funds uh, when we are in the process of, of fixing the bus and we are hoping that very soon it will be ready for use by the church. And so these are, and I'm not sure I'll be able to recount all the specific ways that one of you uh, uh, has supported our, mi our ministry, but these are some ways that I can I can uh, itemize and, and uh, indicate as to how one of you has helped us in the past. And um, going forward, in what ways can one of you help us? Well. Um, we are hoping that you continue with their support and partnership for the things that we have been doing. But one of the things on my heart, and one of the things we are praying strongly about is, is, is the opportunity to finish the auditorium that we have started. As I said, um, this is a campus church. Many of them do not have any uh, personal income. We rely mostly on their parents for, for their support. But um, over the years, we have started our own auditorium. Currently, that is where we meet, but the place is far from finished. And so we are hoping that this is the uh, 3D impression of the building. And this is a semblance of where we have gotten to. Well, this is, we have, we have moved beyond this phase. We, we have done a little bit more, but we are hoping that we could, God will make a way for us to find the funds to get the, the auditorium done so that um, generations of students who come to the University of Cape Coast 
will not have to struggle to find a place of worship. And that this, this building will be a legacy that we give to um, unborn um, generations of Christians who would come to the University of Jacobs. And so this is an overview of how Waterview has supported us over the years. We are very grateful. We are only hoping that we can go into the future to do greater things for God's kingdom here in Ghana and elsewhere where the kingdom of God needs to be. And so with that out of the way, um, I would like to spend some few minutes to share with you a short devotional and um, the topic was sent to me by the missions committee and so I'm supposed to um, talk about how the gospel is pushing me onto good works. That is um, uh, assuming that we are doing some good work here and we, we thank God for, for that. But in order for me to be able to answer this question um, honest and sincere, I think I must begin by talking about what the gospel means to me. Whatever we are able to do, whatever we endeavor to do, is based on our appreciation, our understanding of what the gospel is. And so I want to begin by sharing with you what the gospel means to me personally and perhaps to my, to my family as well. But I want to begin by reading two passages. One passage we know very well, but let's read um, the uh, passage in Philippians chapter 3, verse 5 to 8. Um, this is what the Apostle Paul writes in verse 5 to 8. Um, he says, perhaps let's begin in verse 4. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Now, in this passage, Paul, in response to the to people who were sort of trying to usurp his position and trying to um, promote themselves above him, Paul suggested that whatever these or those people thought they had, he had them all. And so he began by touting his his um, credentials, if you will, his his status. And so Paul and says that he was circumcised the eighth day. So he went through the correct rituals required by, by scripture for anybody who was a Jew. He was circumcised on the eighth day. He, he came from a proud nation. He was of, from the people of Israel. And I've always thought to myself that if at that time, Israel was part of the G7 or the G8. So Paul was coming from a, a, a proud, pre prestigious nation, the people of Israel. He was from a prominent tribe of the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe from which the first king of Israel was selected. He, 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 had, he was coming from a pre prestigious ancestry. He was a Hebrew of Hebrew. He spoke the Hebrew language and Aramaic languages as well. He was from one of the exclusive sects. He was a Pharisee. He had a religious record. 
He says that as for zeal, he persecuted the church and he, he was a performer. As for legalistic righteousness forces, he was faultless. Yet, this man, with all this ancestry, with all this track record, with all this prestige, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God of salvation to those who believe, to the Jews first, and then to the Gentiles. And so, even Paul, who had some claims to faith when it came to the flesh, says in Romans that he was not ashamed of the gospel. In other words, Paul was saying he was proud of the gospel. Rather than identifying himself with his natural lineage, he preferred to be identified with the gospel. He rather wanted to be affiliated with the gospel. And in answering this question of how the gospel is pushing me onto good works, I want to suggest that, like Paul, I am also proud of the gospel. I am proud of the gospel, and more so me, because I don't have I cannot claim the things Paul claimed about himself in this letter. I come from Ghana, a third world country with a lot of unemployment, disease and other things. Yes, I am proud to be a Ghanaian, but I am even more proud to be associated with the gospel and not necessarily where I'm coming from. That pride in the gospel is what pushes me to do the things that I am doing. Like Paul, who did not want to, to develop his identity from his natural lineage, I prefer to identify myself with the gospel. In other words, the gospel is the source of my identity. Who, who the person I am today, the person I would ever be, is because of the gospel. And I identify with this passage in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. The Apostle Paul says, Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made of the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at, one, at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promises, having no hope and without God in the world. You see, before I became Christian, before I, I got to know the gospel, um, I was, I had no identity. I was nobody. It is the gospel that has given me hope that has connected me God to God, and that is what gives me the identity that I, I can boast of today. And so, like Paul, I am proud of the gospel. Why? Because that is where my identity is. I prefer to be identified with the gospel and nothing else. Again, I am proud of the gospel because I derive my, my life's purpose from the gospel. If, if you can see the image I have provided here, this was only yesterday that a young lady decided to give her life to Christ. And I'm happy, I am glad that I was part. God used me as a vessel to bring this lady, this young person, into the kingdom. And that helps me identify my purpose in, in life. In Ephesians chapter um, 3 verse 7, again, the Apostle Paul writes, Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given, was given. 
to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Of Christ. So through the gospel, I find my purpose. The purpose where God uses me and partners with me for the salvation of the, of, of the world. I am part of God's mission in this, in this world, all because of the gospel. Again, I am proud of the gospel because the gospel gives me, gives my life meaning. And I want to share with you a, a, a text message, somebody, sorry, um, a, a former church member of the campus they sent to me, um, just on September 28, 2020. His name is Alfred. He says, taking a deep reflection on one, taking a deep reflection one day over my life, I realized that there are some few amazing individuals who have really made a great impact on my spiritual life, and you are one of them. Today, I stand so well in Christ because excellent and seasoned Bible teachings, sermons, and guidance yours because your excellent and seasoned bible teaching sermons and guidance made it possible the echoes of the sermons still ring bells in my mind for every minute of my life so through the gospel i am able to make some meaningful impact in the life of some young people the gospel has afforded me a relationship with god from nobody Without no God, with no hope, the gospel has brought me closer to God. I can also claim to be a son of God. The gospel has also given me a family. I worship with some wonderful young people. And so all these has been afforded me or have been afforded me because of the gospel. And so I am proud of the gospel and what it has turned me into. So with all these, how does the gospel push me onto good works? I am convinced by the gospel. Looking at myself and what the gospel has been able to transform me into, I am convinced about the efficacy, the power in the gospel. Therefore, it encourages me. It pushes me to do whatever I need to do. I am motivated by the gospel. From the conviction, I am motivated to share. And like Jeremiah, even when I don't want to, even when I'm tempted to, to, to hold on and to shut up, I can't. The power of the gospel is, is shut up in my bones. I cannot keep quiet. And so through the conviction, I am motivated to share. The love of Christ edges me. From what I have experienced from the cross, the deep love of the Father, I need to, I must, I should spread it to others. And I am motivated to push on to good works because of the inherent power in the gospel. The power in the gospel edges me on, moves me, protects me, guides me, and inspires me. And so I hope that as a church, we are all proud of the gospel as Paul was, as Adam, so that together we can spread the gospel. God bless you and hope to see you again. Bye-bye.